Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. I welcome you to the town of Mayville, North Dakota, which is located in Trail County. Uh, it is spelled T-R-A-I-L-L, -L, County. Uh, this town is located in the eastern region of, in the eastern central region of North Dakota. It is almost in the middle of, uh, it is almost located in between Fargo and Grand Forks, and Grand Forks. It is 43 minutes, uh, south of Grand Forks and 56 minutes north of Fargo. So it's kind of sort of in the middle of those two cities. Uh, now basically, uh, this is just a typical Midwestern uh, town, if you will. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to this town, but with the housing prices to where they are and with some of the shenanigans going on in many of your larger cities even your mid-sized cities anymore even your smaller cities anymore I'm fairly sure that there's many of you that are sick and tired of the bullshit and you're looking for a place to live to raise your family if you have one even if you're by yourself you're looking for a nice quiet place to live a nice quiet place to where when you get off of work at night and you want to relax and get away from society so to speak you have a nice quiet place to do that to do that in nice quiet safe low to no roof raft all that good stuff that most of us who got some sense desire to have that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these type of videos because you know uh, me personally I'm not a city person I've told you guys that before and I'll tell you guys that again for those of you that are just tuning into this channel and this might be your first video that you're watching so if this is your first video that you're watching on this channel welcome to my channel uh, and I invite you to watch all my other videos on this channel that I have made. But anyways, for those of you that are looking to maybe downsize your life a little bit, or you're looking to live in a community that's smaller, that's quieter, uh, you know, relatively low key, but at the same time, you're within an hour of larger cities like in this case you're within an hour of Fargo you're only 43 minutes away from Grand Forks this video will be for you so anyhow the population here is sitting at eight uh, sitting at 1854 people and this city has lost 0.2% of its population as, as of the 2020 census. Now, this city has been losing population ever since the 1980 census. And I'm assuming the reason why there's a loss of population here is because it's a little further away from larger cities when it comes to commute to work. I mean, you know, this is North Dakota, and here in eastern North Dakota, they do get a fair amount of snow every year, and sometimes, you know, between the snow and the, and the sub-zero temperatures, it can get a little hectic driving to work every day during the winter. Not to mention that the winters up here are relatively long, like seven to eight months long. But anyways, uh... If you're wanting to live here, the median home prices are—I mean, the median rent prices are going to go from six sixty to twelve six to twelve to one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars uh, a month. If you're looking to own, home ownership is relatively affordable. 
if you can find something. I mean, there are people buying up houses around this area. Now, the cheapest house you're going to be able to find it will be 159 grand. The next cheapest after that will be in the 180s, and then after that, it will go into the 200s. Now, crime here is very low. Both your violent and property crime are well below national average. Now, when it comes to the racial demographics, I mean, you got 91.1% .1 white, 1.8% Native American, 3.3% black, and 1.6% Hispanic. And I'm going to talk about racist for a brief second. I mean, this is kind of a touchy topic to a lot of people, but you know what? I'm going to take a chance on this video and talk about it just briefly. Now, you know, but anyways, now I know there's a lot of you that prefer to live in a community that's a little bit more diverse. I mean, and I'm not going to lie to you folks. I'm one of them. But, you know, sometimes... You have to, I guess, make decisions that sometimes could be difficult to make. Now, one thing I notice ever since I've been out here, you know, doing these kind of videos and also in my personal life, looking for places to live and move and looking for decent, quiet communities to live in is like, you know, now, I mean, uh, like I told you guys, I'm not a fan of living in a big city. I'd rather live in a smaller community, maybe within an hour of a city. Despite some of the inconveniences that that type of living setup could be, I mean, could bring about, such as less amenities, having to spend more time driving and more money on gas and more air and tell on the vehicle to get to re, re, to get to wherever it is you gotta get to to include your job in some cases. Now and one thing I've noticed is sometimes in a lot of your communities that are more diverse I hate to say it but Sometimes in those type of communities, either A, if the community is decent, decent meaning low crime, decent for me would mean low crime, low roof raff, and at the same time, not too far from larger cities, not too far from amenities. And from my experience, if I were to find a community like that, which there are, which they, they're out here, I most likely would not be able to afford to live in those communities. And I'm fairly sure there's several of you out here that are minority, I'll just say, that you may have encountered the same experience as, as what I'm currently discussing. As where if you find a place that's more affordable, more in your price range, to where it's not too far from amenities, and, it's, and at the same time the community is fairly diverse, you'll find that for the more affordable price, the crime is going to be higher, there's going to be more riffraff, and unfortunately you're going to have to deal with a higher percentage of degenerates day to day which most of us that got some sense don't want to deal with so the I, so so the question is how do you get around that well I don't have the magic answer to that question if I did I would tell you guys and obviously I would have exercised and that in my own life but I don't got the answer to that question my only answer to that question is which really ain't gonna answer the question but my only answer to all the madness is you gotta make a decision you gotta make choices I mean at the end of the day the question you gotta ask yourself 
is which one is more important? Would you rather live in a community that's, you know, which if you, I mean, obviously, if you if if you got the right amount of money, you can live wherever, and you know you'll be all right if you got the money. But let's keep it real. The vast majority of folks out here who are looking to purchase a home right now do not have the right amount of money to live exactly where they desire to live. So therefore, most of us have to make decisions. So I guess in the, I guess in my case, with my kind of personality and what I look for in a neighborhood, in a community, and also in a house setup, like lot size, square footage, and all that good stuff is, would I rather live in a community that's diverse, and then I got to deal with higher crime and more rough raft or would I rather live in an area that's less diverse to where there's not going to be a whole lot of people that look like me per se but then the crime is going to be lower there's not going to be as much rough raft and when I go on my little trips when I, and when I go on my little trips I'm not going to have to worry so much about people breaking in my house. I'm not going to have to worry so much about people messing with any of my vehicles or messing with any of my possessions that are outside. So, I mean, I, at the end of the day, you know, I got to make that decision. So what do I do? What would I do? Here's what I would do. I would live in a community that's less diverse, but safe. As opposed to a community that's more diverse, and then you gotta deal with more riffraff. Now, fortunately for me, where I live here in Alabama, I live in a community that's, that's both diverse and is safe. Now, I will tell you folks that I am a little further away from larger cities than what I would desire. I'll tell you that much. And I will also tell you that as far as it goes for decent amenities, I'm further away from all that than what I would desire. But when it comes to diversity and when it comes to my safety, I got where I live, I do got diversity as well as safety. But I would say for the majority of people looking to buy a house right about now, and I will also say in the majority of circumstances, you know, many of you who are minority are going to have to make those type of decisions. And if I was in your shoes, I would rather live in a community that's less diverse but safer but that's me and i'm not saying that if you choose i'm not saying that if you choose that path everything is going to be perfect and peaches and cream and rainbows in the sky because it isn't hate to say it but it isn't i mean you're going to get the you might get that Karen, so to speak, that's going to give you a hard time harass you because they're assuming that you don't live in that community. You're just, you know, there to cause trouble or whatever. You might get that individual that doesn't like anyone outside their race and they might give you a problem. And those type of situations, unfortunately, are always... You know, there's always that chance where something like that could happen. Now, if you live in a community that's higher, that's more diverse, but the the but higher crime and more and, and, and more riffraff, I mean, I would say uh, the probability of something negative happening in a community like that, especially now with the amount of people that are struggling and homeless due to the high price of housing, I would say if you live in a community that's higher crime, 
the chances of something bad happening to you or your property is going to be a little greater than if you were to live in a community that was less diverse. Now, obviously, I don't got no statistical data to back any of what I just said. I'm just going off of a mixer of what I think and also some of what I've experienced over the years living in different communities throughout the United States. So let's keep going. So Mayville, North Dakota was founded in was founded in 1881, named after the first white child born in the area. The this this child that was born, uh, their name was May Arnold, and this was the first white child born in this particular area. And this is, and Mayville is also the home of Mayville University. Now, as far as things to do, I mean, it's a small town, so there's not going to be a whole lot of entertainment. For entertainment, you'll have to go to either Grand Forks or Fargo. But you do got the Island Park here, and you also got a few other small parks within, within this area. You got the Mayport Community Center for those of you that are into sports. You got the Mayville Water Park for the summertime. And you also got the Mayville Golf Club. So that's going to be about it for your entertainment in this town. So, and kind of piggyback into what I was talking about a second ago when it came to diversity. Uh, as far as my two cents about this town, uh, if, I was, if I was looking for a place to live in this region of North Dakota, if I was unable to find a place that was a little bit more diverse but at the same time you know decent i'm not gonna lie to you folks i i would consider checking out this community i would because to me my safety is more important than living somewhere that's diverse now I realize that living somewhere that's diverse can also can, can can sometimes contribute to your safety because as some people will suggest there's safety in numbers like if there's a fair amount of people that look like you or they're of the same lineage as you you might be safer in that particular community than a other than another community where we don't got people that share the same lineage as you. However, as I've discovered throughout the years of living in different communities, the whole safety of numbers thing, unfortunately, is not always true. Unfortunately, you're not going to always be safer because you got a higher number of people that look like you with your same lineage living in an area. I mean, I've been in situations where I lived in areas where there is almost no one that looked like me in the area, but I was, I feel safer in those areas and people were actually nicer to me in those areas than areas to where there were more people that looked like me that lived in that area. So I guess what I'm saying is, for those of you that uh, prefer to live in a place that's more diverse, there's more people of your lineage close by, I get it, I got it, I don't blame you, I feel the same way. Fortunately, where I live, I have that. But for those of you that are minority and you're moving to a state like North Dakota,
just bear in mind that I mean I, if, if I was you I would I would put I would put my safety over diversity all right folks hopefully I said something that made sense hopefully you guys got something out of my rant here and I'm gonna go ahead and, and allow you guys to watch the remainder of this video so until next time if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and do that go ahead and give this video a thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm so I can continue to grow this channel and as always, I thank every last one of you for, for tuning in to another episode of Andrew's Life. Y'all have a blessed one. See you on the next one.